Today's episode of Fantasy Fiction is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash fantasyfiction. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Kindle, MP3 player, or Magic Stone. Today we're recommending A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. Impress your friends with real-life magic. Act like you read a long book without any actual reading. Think of all the masturbating you'll get done. So if you're enjoying the show, give the free trial a chance. That's audibletrial.com slash fantasyfiction. Enjoy the episode. Reese's, put down that Merc Monk. But he's my friend. In the land of fantasy and the fields of fiction, there roll two knights across the plain. Two thieves of the night, two warriors of honor, in the shadow of the mountain cry their name. Until the deed is done Until the quest is won The battle's in our minds Until the end of time Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Fantasy Fiction. My name is Dominic. My name is Josh. And we are back from an extended break, but we're back (laughs) and we're happy you're here. Yes, thank you for returning Sorry uh, for the long break, but some of us needed to hibernate for a few weeks. And hibernate means get sick and not leave your bed. Yes, get sick, not leave your bed, drink uh, all the NyQuil you can afford. And then, (laughs) once the fever has passed, Uh you may wake and live your life again. Anew. It's like like first spring. (laughs) Josh, what did you do this week? Uh, well, this past couple of weeks that we haven't been doing the show, I was able to catch up on a lot of um, like series, like shows. Uh-huh. And my mom and her husband, who I guess I would call my stepdad, I guess that's the technical <laughs> term for that. I think so. I think that's the the scientific term. That's the science. Yeah, they got like Verizon, so they got like HBO and all this shit. They got like uh-huh. everything. So I watched uh, Boardwalk Empire, which I fucking love. Oh man, that's a show I wanted to watch, but Dude. I haven't I haven't been able to. But I I just got a I just moved into a new place, and and uh, Verizon was like, sign up for TV as well because it's cheaper, and we'll give you HBO for a month. Yeah. So I think I could probably marathon that. Um, oh yeah. But I I would like to. But you liked it, dude. I loved it. It's it's beautiful. It might be my favorite show ever. Hmm. It's so good. Uh, once you get to like season two and you get to uh, the character Richard Harrow, holy shit, dude! He's yeah. like he's like a fucking Star Wars character. He's like epic. He's great. Oh man, that's cool. It's a great uh, show. Uh, did, you, did you watch anything else? Did you watch any other TV shows? Uh, I watched True Detective too, which I also liked a lot. Oh, you good. know what? That's the show I should watch immediately because it's yeah. not that long. Yeah, it's eight. It's eight episodes, and it's uh, it goes pretty quick. It's really good. It's creepy as shit. Yeah, I'm into that. I'm into that. What did you do this this break, Dom? Well, uh, we're gonna make the stop at TV first. All right, you okay. ready for this? All right, I'm ready. <laughs> I watched I watched the Broad City premiere this week. Okay, and I watched the Parks and Rec first episode of this new season. Oh, I have to watch the Parks and Rec uh, final season, right? It's the last one. Yeah, well, what's cool about it is that it's eight years into the future, so it's 2017. That's insane. That doesn't... and there's light sci-fi in it. There's light sci-fi. In it? Yeah, so like they're using <laughs> like these like you know clear pads that are like basically iPads, but with like a right. 3D Iron Man touch interface. So it's pretty cool. It's it's kind of neat. I think it's a good premise, uh, and it's great platform to make plenty of science fiction jokes that's ridiculous have you seen broad city no no i haven't haven't. okay you can watch the first season on hulu and you can watch Mm -hmm. i think the premiere episode of the new season on uh comedycentral.com it's the two Uh, the two comedians right the two comedians and they they live in new york is that the is that the one yeah abby and uh yeah yeah. 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 uh it's the best it's the best show it's so funny the premiere is really really funny I would say if you saw Broad City on TV on a commercial and you were like, that show seems interesting. You mm-hmm. should absolutely you should watch it. It's hilarious. All right, I'll check that out. 
Um, but uh, I also went to the Mutter Museum, Josh. Oh, yes. <laughs> the Mutter Museum is a museum of medical oddities and mm-hmm. such, uh, and it's really gross, uh, but it makes you really appreciate what we have today. Yeah, because the, um, medical, the medical stuff back then was like, oh, do you have a toothache? Uh, we have to cut your leg off and put, le- yeah, put we're leeches have inside to of it. something. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's the other thing. A lot of it was guessing. Like, if someone's mm-hmm. leg went lame, they would just shock it with electricity to try to bring it back. Yeah, like they would so, Frankenstein it. Yeah, they're like, ah, we'll get it going. <laughs> just keep shocking it. <laughs> Hook it up to a car battery. There's no cars yet. but we'll- No, but we'll, <laughs> the battery for the car has been invented. Yeah. It's piece at a time here, folks. Yeah. Henry Ford didn't do everything by himself. It took a It took a village. It took a village. It did. <laughs> Uh, but uh, <laughs> did you throw uh, up when you were there? Did you just walk in and immediately projectile vomit everywhere? No, I would say, I would say the grossest thing I saw was like uh, a, a a a child uh-huh. with a with a butt growth that was pretty gross, like a tail. Uh no, it was like uh, it was pretty gross. It's <laughs> like a it's just a mass of something. I guess okay. it's kind of like a like a tumor or something. Yeah, it's pretty gross. The other really gross thing is uh, uh, this guy's skeleton that just kept growing, and oh, they have cool. they have the skeleton on display, which is pretty neat. Um, but it's like you could see his ribs are like connected by bone. Is that and, elephantitis? Like, his, is that what that is? I don't think so. It's like this. Uh, it's it, you can see it online, but yeah. it's 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 uh, it's gross. <laughs> it's all gross. I'm just I glad it, I wasn't born with that. Yeah, I'm pretty happy I wasn't born with any of those things. Unless yeah. something is a dormant in my body and it wants to show up later. <laughs> now I'm not going to sleep tonight, Dom. Well, don't go to the Mutter Museum because <laughs> you'll get scared. I'll just throw up when I walk in. <laughs> but other than that, Josh, the last thing we have to talk about here in the intro is uh-huh. that we will be appearing at MAGFest this week. Fuck yeah. Bring yes. your asses to it. To it. It's going to be... Is it technically Baltimore? Yeah, it's technically Maryland. It's National Harbor, Maryland. But it's okay. right across the Potomac, which is uh, across from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Awesome. <laughs> We're going to be near the president. <laughs> and all the Congress people. Uh, but uh, MAGFest <laughs> is the Music and Games Festival. We do another show called Continue. Mm-hmm. Uh, that That's on the gaming end. Uh, but we have a panel on Friday night, don't we? We do. It's Friday night at 11 o'clock at night. So mm-hmm. uh, I know everyone who listens to this show probably doesn't go to sleep before 11. So if- so hopefully you will be there yeah. if you're going to MAGFest. Uh, but we'll be able to hang out and say hello to people and talk about fantasy fiction uh, and uh, other stuff. I think it's... We have a panel, but I think we have something else planned for the panel. It's not a traditional panel. Yeah, we've got some stuff planned, but I mean, I think there will also be some time for questions. Uh, There's some time for pictures. Mm -hmm, Uh, mm -hmm. I know when we usually go, this is your first time, Don, but when we usually go, we hang out. We usually schedule like a meetup uh, down in the the hotel, which is like this huge massive hotel. Do you know what the hotel hotel is called? The Gaylord. The Gaylord, okay. (laughs) The Gaylord Hotel. A character in a fantasy fiction. Yeah, it sounds story. very fantasy fiction. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Lord Gaiman. Uh, uh, but you guys go down there, and then you just usually, what, you tweet out or put out a Facebook post? Yeah, we, we tweet out and, and Facebook post. We do the social media, and we just say, hey, we're going to be down here if you want to come uh, take a picture, get an autograph, whatever you want to do. Ask okay. us questions. Also, if you're sick, please do not go to MAGFest. <laughs> yeah, it might just be better just to stay home. I get, like, strep throat every year from MAGFest. So. I am determined to not get sick at all. I'm bringing vitamin C. Yeah. Emergency. <laughs> And uh, hand sanitizer. Uh, I, you know, I rarely do get sick, and I'm going to try not to get sick. Yeah. So It's almost impossible at MAGFest we'll, to not get sick, to be we'll honest. See, we'll see about that. Unless you're Wolverine. I think Wolverine would get sick at MAGFest. He would, but he'd probably get better pretty quickly, I mean. Yeah, unless it was the plague. But if you're going to MAGFest, feel free to stop by the Continue panel at 11 p.m. on Friday and uh, look for us. Come and say hello. Don't be afraid to uh, say hi. We'd yeah, to that's you. why we're there. I mean, that's why we go. We go to talk to you and meet people. It's nice to, to you know, not sit in my house and 
and interact with people over the computer machine for once. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So come say hi. One last thing before we start, we didn't have prompts for last week because we didn't get a chance to ask, but we managed to gather some through uh, social media and such. But this week, the prompts are Plague, submitted by Joseph Niemi, Uh and Wyverns, submitted by Silverboard. So thank you for those, guys. And that's what you're going to hear stories about. And Josh. Yes. Segwaying into that. Let's get ready to story. <laughs> Let's get ready to fantasy. All right, Dom, um, are you ready? I am ready for some fantasy. Rub it all over my body. Um, See what I do to you. I'm with good. my lips. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to use that on someone someday. (laughs) My story is called Courage in the Line of Fire Armageddon the Day Darano Stood Still. Oh, damn. It is epic. 2,000 years ago, Daranos was full of stupid bullshit that nobody remembers except for this story that someone wrote down on a stone tablet, probably with their dick or something. Oh, all right. (laughs) 2,000 years ago. (laughs) Is that from now, our age, or? Well, I would think that concurrently, our time is matching with Daranos and Orkspire time. Oh, okay, so So, 2,000 years in their past. Yes, in their past. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay, gotcha. (laughs) Records from this era are sketchy at best due to the worst plague to ever hit anywhere ever. Even worse than the plague that caused your mom's face to look like the Predator's weird pepperoni nipples. (laughs) That Predator's got pepperoni nips? You know he does. He's probably got like 17 of them. Hmm, gonna have to Google search that. (laughs) Predator pep nip. Take safe search off first. Oh, yeah. Whoops, (laughs) forgot about that. (laughs) Whoops. (laughs) <laughs> my gods another one said nigel heelsmith a human apothecary and alchemist who famously invented the glow in the dark jizz potion which was all the rage during the swinger wars and the key party reconstructions <laughs> on the table of his lab lay a dying orc who was totally dying and it probably hurt really bad because dying's not like it is in the movies dying hurts a lot <laughs> You don't just, like, breathe the last breath and then you're okay dead. Everyone who dies in the movies is like, oh, I can see everything. It's like, no, man, you're fucking dying. Yeah, like, everything hurts. Your heart is probably, like, beating so fast because your brain is telling it to live more, but it can't. Hmm. I don't know. I've never died. That's sad. Yet. (laughs) (laughs) What's wrong with him, master? Asked Snuffles, Nigel's midget troll slave. Er... Nigel's assistant. Yeah. <laughs> assistant. <laughs> He's got the wyvern flu, Snuffles. Look here. You can tell by his symptoms. First, you grow a huge set of full blown, homegrown hangers. <laughs> the orc groaned in pain. That doesn't sound so terrible, Master, replied Snuffles. No, it's pretty fucking sweet, Snuffles. But next, your tits grow dicks. <laughs> <laughs> the orc groaned again as the virus began to take him. And then, Nigel continued, you turn flannel and start to have an insatiable thirst for something called root beer. <laughs> Bark says bite, groaned the orc as Snuffles held his flannel-colored hand to comfort him. I would imagine growing the dicks out of your tits is painful, right? I would imagine just growing the tits would be painful. <laughs> because they're hanging and you're not used to it. You're back, man. Yeah. People get, like... Stuff is stretching and stuff. It's not fun. Yeah. I don't know. I never had tits. (laughs) Yet. (laughs) Praying like hell. I'm gonna go to the Mutter Museum and see some of that shit. Yeah, why not? (laughs) Steal some boobs. How do we cure him? Asked Snuffles. We can't. This is the deadliest virus in the history of Darinos. Even more deadly than Turbo Chlamydia, said (laughs) Nigel. (laughs) Besides, this one's already dead, he said as the orc slumped over. How do we stop this scourge, master? Asked Snuffles. <laughs> Just then, the orc gasped back to life. I'm not <laughs> sure, but judging by this dead orc's symptoms, the orc interrupted. Save me. <laughs> judging by this dead orc's symptoms, Nigel continued, I have a few theories. <laughs> oh, God, help me, mommy, it hurts. The orc screamed. <laughs> Snuffles, 
Help me cover this dead orc up in, with this death shroud, and then we'll be off to find the cure. Fuck! <laughs> dying sucks, the orc said as they covered him up. Two days later, he died. His family had to bury him closed casket, because how the hell are you going to have a dude with dicks on his tits just out in the open for Nana to see? I mean, you got to figure chances are someone's, someone's Nana out there did anal back in the day, but I ain't trying to think about that. <laughs> I imagine they just put him in like a uh, a big shirt, like a big Fred Flintstone shirt. <laughs> yeah, like like a dog, <laughs> a big dog shirt to cover it up. <laughs> like, if they were going to do open casket, I mean, like when your cat or your dog dies and you gotta bury it, so you find like the oldest, u- most useless shirt to bury. <laughs> you may have buried more animals than I have, Josh. <laughs> I may have. <laughs> <laughs> Soon, Nigel and Snuffles find themselves on their quest to find the wyvern flu cure. As they strolled through the forest, each contemplated the toll this mighty undertaking was going to have on their lives, and the lives of possibly every citizen of Daranos. This weighed heavily on Nigel as they trekked along for days in silence. As they walked more and more, giant birds could be seen flying overhead. Finally, Snuffles broke the tension. Master, he said quietly. I have something to tell you. I'm gay. <laughs> Finally, the two arrived at the massive post fire. <laughs> they just came out to him. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm happy that it, I guess it was positive because yeah. it, it, there was no negativity. No, so. no. No, you just, you know, that Good was the them. time. That was Good the time. Good for them. Good for them. 2,000 years ago, that was pretty progressive. Oh, well, Daranos is pretty progressive. Very sexually open. I don't know. Mm. Giant wyverns were flying in and out of holes they probably made nests in, and nightclubs, and, wi- and a wyvern bar where everybody knows their name, and they're always <laughs> glad they came. As Nigel and Snuffles looked up, they could see the spires disappear into the clouds like a giant orgy of earth dicks just titty-fucking the shit out of the clouds. And the clouds were all like, oh yeah, oh yeah, but why? How does that feel good for the clouds? Do the clouds have clits on their tits? Stop lying to me, cloud porn. Give me something real. <laughs> Yeah, come on, clouds. <laughs> All around the bottom of the spire lay dying elves, orcs, humans, double humans, centaurs, trolls, humanzies, and Bigfoots. All dying from the plague. <laughs> humanzies. Confirmed. Confirmed. Look it up on YouTube. Search humanzies right now. <laughs> it's a real thing. <laughs> we have to get up there and grab some wyvern feathers. That's the last ingredient I need for my potion, Nigel said. And then everyone will be cured? Questioned Snuffles. What? Nigel replied, the, the potion to, cu- to cure the plague. Yeah, <laughs> Nigel replied as a thought bubble appeared over his head. Inside, you could see a potion flask with the words glow in the dark jizz potion 2 written on it and a cartoon <laughs> version of Nigel frowning and putting some wyvern feathers into another flask that read plague cure. Then cartoon <laughs> Nigel saying, I guess the jizz potion will have to wait. <laughs> For now, Nigel said out loud back in the real world, seemingly to nobody at all. (laughs) Finally, Nigel and Snuffles climbed their way to the top of the most spooky and dick-like spire. At the top sat a crowned wyvern with bird armor on for some reason, probably because it looked cool, even though, how would a bird fly with metal armor? Their bones are hollow, and for fuck's sake... (laughs) Their bones are hollow for fuck's sake, and metal is heavy because of science. But they didn't know about science yet, so I guess it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's one of those things where uh, if you just uh, if if you if you dream it, be you it. can do it. <laughs> if if you if you're too dumb to know that you can't do that, well, you I, can probably yeah. do it. Yeah. If you believe hard enough, you can fly. You'll do it. <laughs> Mind over matter. That's right. Oh, mighty wyvern king, Nigel proclaimed as he knelt before the great bird. We come to assuage the land below of a terrible curse, and we need your feathers to help end the suffering. The wyvern king stopped preening himself and looked down toward our two heroes. I don't give a fuck about your problems, (laughs) pussy, he said as he reared his head back and shot a laser beam straight out of his dragon-like beak. Damn. Dude, gasped Snuffles. Oh, great king, Nigel went on. The land is suffering, and surely if we die, this great kingdom of yours will also suffer as well. Buddy, you just aren't picking up what I'm putting down, shrieked the king. (laughs) 
laser <laughs> laser at the mouth means shut your stupid word hole. <laughs> <laughs> we just want some feathers, your kingsmanship, Snuffle said timidly. I'll tell you queefers what, the king said. <laughs> if you can best me at a competition, I will give you my own feathers. Nigel and Snuffles agreed. Just then, the king's throne gave way to bellows of smoke, and underneath arose a mighty drum set, like Neil Peart's drum set, but on fucking anabolic meth steroids. <laughs> The king ripped off his, a mighty solo with one wing as he twirled a drumstick like the dude from Poison in the other. <laughs> I will go first, proclaimed the wyvern king as he ripped off the sickest combination of beats anyone had ever heard. This dude made John Bottom sound like your Nana's arrhythmia after a hard <laughs> anal sesh. <laughs> oh, man, that's... I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> this was percussive death incarnate. As he rode the hi-hat, a wyvern minion flew by just as lightning shot out of the set, immediately turning him into a flying roast chicken on a platter. <laughs> as the chicken continued to fly by, it said, Damn! <laughs> and then landed on a dinner table where he was eaten. Nice. <laughs> Somewhere in the woods, a merc monk angrily opened his door to his treehouse. <laughs> God fucking shit ass damn it, he yelled. That's the loudest fucking shit I've ever heard my whole two years of life. <laughs> if I ever have merc monk children, I swear, they're never going to play music that loudly. Hell, they'll never appreciate any loud noises. I'm going to raise my kids to hate every goddamn loud noise there is. I don't care how many <laughs> generations it takes. 2,000 years from now, my ancestors will still be hating on loud ass shit. My reign is eternal, he said as he slammed the door. <laughs> the Wyvern King solo went on for another four hours. Nigel and Snuffles sat in awe at how many times the paradigm shifted in regards to modern percussion techniques and musical theory. <laughs> Finally, Snuffles said, wanna, wanna just steal the feathers while he's doing this drum bit? Yes, Nigel said, and they stuck behind the wyvern, who was now playing guitar and drumming at the same time. <laughs> Doink! They plucked three feathers from him. As they did, he yelled out in pain, Guards! Shoot lasers out of your mouth at them! <laughs> the king yelled. Nigel and Snuffles had only one option. They leapt off the spire into the clouds, hoping for a miracle. As they fell for what seemed like maybe a normal amount of time, they both thought they were doomed. Another amount of normal time went by as Nigel thought about how he had failed Theranos, until suddenly, as if it were written, a miracle happened. <laughs> a lowly wyvern worm swooped down and picked them up, saving them in midair. You saved us, Nigel replied. But why? I heard what you said on the path on your journey here, Snuffles. It was brave of you to come out of the closet, <laughs> and all while doing such a trying quest. Thank you, wyvern. I just love fucking other dudes, Snuffles said as he shrugged. <laughs> the wyvern landed, and the two heroes got off. Now go, said the wyvern. Save your people. Eventually, Nigel and Snuffles would find the potion to cure the world of wyvern flu, which in our world is known as premature ejaculation. <laughs> and all because one midget troll had the courage to be himself, no matter what anyone thought. That's how real change is made, by doing whatever you want, whenever you want. Also, by not trusting Whitey and never listening to anyone who tells you what's best for you, even though they maybe can see the situation from a clearer perspective. Trust me, they can't. They're trifling ass bitches who are jealous of you and your pretty girl or boy swag. <laughs> that was the last time anyone heard of the Wyverns of Daranos. Some say, whenever you hear thunder, that it's the Wyvern King still playing that drum solo. Others say that's stupid. How could anyone play the drums for that long? Still others say that it's a poetic way of explaining the majesty of nature <laughs> and a way to remember the events of that fateful day. Well, who asked you, you fucking pussy-ass bitch? <laughs> hey, look, man, I'm just trying to narrate the, both perspectives as best I can. Your mother takes it in both perspectives as best as she can, you fuck. Wow, dude, really? Yeah, you fucking bitch. Yeah. Finn. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Finn. <laughs> Great story, Josh. Thanks. I like... That the answer to everything mm -hmm. was just being true to yourself. That's right. That's the moral of the story. Hey, I got it. <laughs> and I'm going to start doing it. <laughs> Starting with my story. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs>
Josh. Are you ready for my tale of wyverns and plagues? I am ready for that shit. <laughs> All right. My story is called... It's a, 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 a tale, tale time, tale time. It's called tale time. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. It's a bird theme. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was Friday in Orkspire. <laughs> TGIF for some, SSDD for others, and BDD beef of the freaks. <laughs> what? What's BDD beef? What do you think BDDP is? <laughs> Take a guess. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Big dick. Wait, no. B- BD. No, separate the two. What do you mean? BD. BD. And, and DP. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Moving on. In the center of Orkspire lay a horizon of red mountains, volcanoes, and purple night sky. Mm -hmm. It set the stage for the story about to be (laughs) telt. Lava burst into the air as crazy-ass beasts roared throughout the land because only the livest, most wildest, most poison joker, ape ballinest beast live (laughs) in an environment like this. (laughs) One red dragon flew into the air and exploded. Jesus. Ain't nobody got shit on that. (laughs) Inside of a cave lay an ancient black tome with a red pentagram drawn on it. Yes! All of the sudden, a loud crack echoed throughout the cave as a goddamn fist burst through the cover of the book, and out of it climbed a (laughs) naked wizard. Holy shit. But he had a long beard, so you couldn't see his dick, so it was okay for men to think that this part was cool. (laughs) Although the tome was old, time did not reflect on the wizard's face. He had the look and build of an adult man. Bald head, long brown beard, tattoo of scorpion with joint in his claw on his (laughs) chest. Yeah, this dude was the unprotected sex of wizards. I mean, you look at this guy and you can just tell he's never put a condom on in his life. (laughs) I would hope that somebody would never say that about me. But at the same time, if they did, I wouldn't complain. (laughs) Centuries ago, this wizard bound himself inside this now punched apart tome to fully study and practice the ways of black magic. It was a delicate ritual that required the utmost of safety. This required him to punch everything within a three mile radius until it was dead. Nice. This took minutes. (laughs) Holy shit. (laughs) Just before the ritual took place, a hero from a nearby village attempted to put an end to the wizard's plan. Your plague of punches on this land ends here, (laughs) yelled the young hero as he swung his axe at the wizard. The wizard phased in and out of reality to dodge the strike, then phased into kicking this dude's ass to death (laughs) with 178 kicks to his butt. That crippled his butt, then his legs, then his body, then his life. Crippling someone's life equals killing them. (laughs) (laughs) Crippled his life. (laughs) He now walked out of the cave and onto the ledge of the Red Mountain. He held his arms to the sky and let the hot wind whip around his naked balls and ball sack. Oh, dude, that feels so good. <laughs> Regulators! <laughs> Boom, the wizard. The beating flap of large wings could be heard immediately, sending hot wind whipping around the wizard's naked nipples and butt cheeks as a red <laughs> and black wyvern landed before the nudist. <laughs> Is he proclaiming he's a nudist, or is it just known that he is? It's just, well, it's just kind of known, okay. because, I mean, as far as we know, he's only been nude so right, far. Right, right. It's like the Terminator. <laughs> the wizard took flight upon the back of the wyvern. The beast was magnificent in the sky, doing barrel rolls and shit and flips and shit. It was dope. <laughs> the two flew over a black feathered harpy did some sick-ass attack maneuver that winged creatures can do, and (laughs) tore the feathers from the bird person completely. (laughs) Oh my god. The nude wizard now donned his new black feathered robe. All the while, the boulder lords down in the canyon of back sweat watched as they (laughs) sang. Stop. Drop. Shut up and open up shop. Oh, no. That's a rope rider's roll. (laughs) I want to work in that place even though it's called the back sweat mountains <laughs> the, the canyon of back sweat. that's it canyon of back sweat the wyvern landed at the mouth of another cave the wizard dismounted and walked over to a dead black tree 
He looked it over, grabbed a branch, and tore it off by flexing into a bodybuilder pose, which <laughs> tore apart his black feathered robe. And it was okay for men to like this as well because bodybuilding is what men do. And even though some people could see some hot underdick, it was okay. Hot <laughs> underdick. <laughs> <laughs> the branch was the perfect staff size. Mm. Gripping it like some hot underdick, the wizard <laughs> entered the cave. Nice. <laughs> Inside, a demon was bound in black chains against the cave's red wall. He hissed and cursed in demon tongue, and it kind of sounded like he was freestyling in demon tongue <laughs> nice. as well, but the wizard wasn't sure. But something in the very back of the cave definitely said, damn, at some point. <laughs> The wizard came face to face with the demon and spoke. Who's the baddest? Oh my god. Fuck a dick's tit, you fart ass, replied the <laughs> demon. <laughs> See, I got dick I got dicks with tits on them in this story. That, it happens you got a lot. Tits with dicks on them it happens this. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck a dick's tit, you fart ass, replied the demon. Oh damn, I don't even I, I don't even understand that one, echoed the voice in the back of the cave again. <laughs> I the already wiz- like this guy. <laughs> the voice, the voice of the demon. Yeah, yeah the voice. The voice. Oh, okay. The wizard lifted his hand, did seven 360 spins, Jeez. and slapped the demon across the face so hard that the demon could feel his dignity leaving his body in a sad <laughs> whimper. Who's the meanest? replied the wizard as he picked up some rocks and put on some rock knuckles, dipped them in hot lava, and boxed the fuck (laughs) out of the demon's abs with like 10,000 jabs that tenderized his demon innards. (laughs) It's like kickboxer. Yeah, it's like it's a lot like the movie Bloodsport. Bloodsport, yeah. <laughs> Eat poopy, gross doo doo poop. Said the demon as he tried not dying. He's getting his he's getting his dignity back. He's getting it back. He's, he's getting it back. He's getting it back. <laughs> then the wizard broke off one of his demon hordes and started playing this song. <laughs> the wizard stopped playing and turned to the demon. I'll ask once more. Who's the baddest, said the wizard as he magically levitated and spun around slowly. (laughs) That was it. You break off a part of somebody and use it as an instrument in your dis opus, you ain't got shit anymore. (laughs) Dis opus? That's fucking brilliant. (laughs) The demon whimpered. You are. And and who am I? Asked the wizard as he magically was spinning upside down and he had gold chains on now. (laughs) Ralph Bodman, <laughs> aka the Flexicutioner. <laughs> That's right, flex the wizard's muscles. Reminder, he's been nude this whole time, just nude, beating someone up and spinning around and shit. The wizard put the demon's head between his pecs and flexed so goddamn hard that the demon's head exploded. <laughs> Holy fuck, said the voice in the back of the cave. <laughs> oh my shit, that guy just got murdered. God, holy damn, what the fuck? I'm getting out of here. That guy just got murdered. It just went from, from like about a, a 5 to an 11. To an 11. He's, he's dude, out, he's done. The dude just witnessed a murder. Yeah. He just fucking watched. Yeah. The demon then turned into a red jewel, because that's what happens when a demon gets fucked up like that and admits that someone is more bad than they are. Oh, man. The wizard picked up the jewel and notched it into his staff. A red laser shot out of the staff and blew off the entire wall of the cave. Jesus. A pterodactyl flew overhead with a gem man in his rat feet. <laughs> Pterodactyls are pterodactyls and rats mixed that's disgusting. together by some sick fuck. You don't really <laughs> want to know what that looks like because those two animals combined is pretty fucking frightening and horrible. So we're just going to move on <laughs> from that. Made up of white gemstones, the gem man struggled and yelled, No! This cannot be the end of Grimstein. Return me to my crystal palace and put my clothes back on, you perverted beast. <laughs> the pterodactyl landed and smacked Grimstein against the jagged stone. The gem man broke apart as he did. The word fuck seemed to echo out <laughs> through an unseen dimension for quite some time. <laughs> The wizard collected the gems and threw them into a nearby lava pit and definitely handled his gem dick somewhere in there, but it was broken apart from his body, so it was okay for men to really like that part if they wanted to. Just the naked wizard handling a gem man's naked, busted apart bone. Additionally, if some men wanted to say that this was their favorite part of the story, that's okay. That would be okay. That's all right. (laughs) 
<laughs> Still naked, the wizard lifted his hands to the purple sky again and chanted the secret spell, mm. which unfortunately was a secret, so we can't repeat it here, or we'd be breaking wizard law. Mm-hmm. Look, I'd tell you how the spell went if it were up to me, but I don't want to be tried and sentenced to 2,000 years as a dickless dog, <laughs> which, may I remind you, is the punishment for repeating spells of secrecy. Mm-hmm. Everybody does that. That's <laughs> canon. It's can it's canon. <laughs> the lava pit rumbled as something emerged, like if someone played the end of Terminator 2 Judgment Day in reverse. <laughs> Walking out of the lava was a large crystal steed that sparkled magic sparkles Dude. that if you caught them on your tongue, you could taste magic if you wanted to. What does magic taste like? Uh, like like nerds, probably. I would think like Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops? Hmm, okay. All right. <laughs> then the crystal steed walked right into the air because crystal steeds can fly. Fuck yes. The nude wizard hopped on the back of the steed and lifted his black staff to the sky and said, No one can fuck with this. <laughs> Then the wizard and the crystal steed levitated off into the purple night. Then this song played. <laughs> There's nobody this bad, and I know you are sad, because you ain't got out on a dick like this. <laughs> if you want to punch fight me, then you can fucking punch fight me, and then you'll be on the ground looking at my under dick. <laughs> And your bone will get so hard that your balls will explode. And you will miss the rest of the 2015 sex season. I'll punch your life away. By the way, I got an extra dick. And when I cast spells, I do awesome fighting moves. I'm a bonus dick having black belt in karate. I'll end your life and your life's life. Then I'll be chilling with your white wife, your honky ass bitch motherfucker. The end. Uh, I'm going to say that that's my favorite part of the tale, and that's okay. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> the, the song that was playing in my head wa- that I was making up while I was setting up to record. <laughs> I was like, that's going into the end. <laughs> All right, well, Josh, that is the end of episode 49. We're almost at 50. We're almost there. We've almost done a year's worth of podcasts, I guess, if you look at it like it was every week. Almost. 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 I I need to get to 50 because it's a round number. 50 is a good number. I think we need to get there. I think we need to get there, too, and we're going to get there Yes. after we get back from MAGFest. Yes, so I think, I, why don't we talk about that real quick, Josh? Yeah. After MAGFest, uh, Josh and I plan to go back to a weekly schedule of fantasy fiction. Yeah. And we'll be doing it with you. You are our friends. <laughs> That's when the sex season really starts. The That's 20- when the sex season really starts. Yeah, we, Josh and I have been talking about it, and uh, we finally feel like we can get back to that schedule. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, we're going to try doing it, uh, after MAGFest. So starting in February, we'll try to do a uh, weekly schedule again. For the doldrums of winter, you'll have a new fantasy fiction every week. Every week. To keep you warm. uh, You know, I think we're going to get hit with a lot of snow in February. Dude, I hope not. I don't want to, I don't want to live in this part of the country with the snow. Yeah, but that's where you live. You should, you should (laughs) invest in an ATV, dude. I should invest in a teleporter. That can take me to somewhere more hospitable, mm. like the fucking moon. I support this breakthrough technology <laughs> idea. I, I used to have ATVs as a kid and stuff. I'd like dirt bikes and stuff. It's less fun than you think. Yeah. It's a lot of like, I mean, it's really fun, but like when you crash into poison ivy and get poison ivy all over your dick, it's less fun. Or a concussion. I got, yeah, I've, I happened. Ugh, that's not fun. Where am well, I? Wait, what am I? <laughs> well, you, well, we're at the end of episode 49, uh, Josh. Okay, okay. <laughs> but uh, before we go, just a few things here. I just wanted to say uh, uh, thank you to everyone who's uh, 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 sent us an email and trying to get through them and, and try and get back to everyone. I don't have all the information in front of me because mm-hmm. I just moved and I lost a bunch of stuff. I, I'm not sure where it is. It's just packed away. But if You live in you, a cave now, so it's going to take what, some time to... Well, I yeah, I, I now live in a red cave yeah. with a with the demon uh, attached <laughs> to the wall. He's my assistant. 
uh, but if you send us something, send us an email uh, just letting us know what you sent so I can... I, I, I would like to properly thank you uh, guys for sending us stuff. Yeah. We got a, a Hobbit hero click, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, we also got a fucking puzzle of an awesome dragon. That oh. was amazing. For snow uh, days. For, for snow days. <laughs> for when there's a th- well, there's a thousand pieces, so... Oh, Jesus. You know, we can't snow do Snow days are coming, so... If you want to reach us at our P.O. Box, it's Fantasy Fiction, P.O. Box 41, Fairless Hills, PA, and that's fairless as in, like, if a game it's wasn't fair... Fairless. Say, hey, this is fairless! <laughs> that's the Fairless Hills, PA, 19030. Uh, but also, I wanted to say uh, I, I've I haven't gotten fantasy fiction merch orders out mm-hmm. in about two weeks because I've been moving and it's been crazy. My life has been crazy, and it's only going to get crazier this week. You married that dragon, and then I married that dragon. Yeah, and we didn't talk about that. It's literally been crazy, guys. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I, uh, I haven't been able to send merch out, uh, and uh, so I just emailed everyone who bought merch, and I just said, hey, I'm sorry, I'm going to send them out this week, I'm real sorry that there's been a delay, mm. and uh, someone wrote back, and uh, well, we got a couple of responses that were just like, ah, oh, it's fine, or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, someone wrote back, and they said, hey, the merch is for my son, and he would be excited if you said his name on the show. Oh, yeah. So, uh, we just wanted to say hello to Drew. Hello, and, Drew. Uh, his dad, Butcher. Which, which, by the way, that's the name on the email that I got. That is and his I real said, name. And I figured anyone named Butcher asked me to do something, I'm just going to do it. Yeah, don't, <laughs> so. don't not do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so hello to Drew, and thank you guys for being patient. Anyone who's ordered anything, thank you for being patient with uh, how mm-hmm. long it takes sometimes. But uh, speaking of merch, we have hoodies and uh, sweatshirts and bumper stickers and stickers and buttons and all kinds of stuff yep. at fantasyfiction.bigcartel.com. So if you'd like to support the show, uh, you can purchase something there if you'd like. But if you don't have money like Josh and I, yeah. uh, we, uh, <laughs> you can leave an iTunes review for free. Yeah iTunes reviews are free and they help us get on the iTunes new and noteworthy sometimes. And you guys have done uh, a lot of them. And I'm going 400. We hit 400. Yeah, Yeah, that's a lot. And and that's incredible. Regardless of how many we do have, it helps to get a steady income of those. So uh, Mm -hmm. leaving a review at any time is always super helpful. So thank you for taking the time to leave a review. And you have one you wanted to read. I'm going to read one. It is by, it's five stars by An Eargasm of Fun and Laughter by Samurai Duckling. (laughs) (laughs) I laughed so hard I shot milk out of my nose. I wasn't even drinking milk at the time. Here's a podcast for those of us who love <laughs> fantasy, but don't always need to take it seriously. Dom and Josh regale you with tales of their respective worlds, Orcs, Fire, and Darinos. Spelling, he spelled Darinos correctly. Oh, nice. <laughs> this show has a liberal application of lowbrow humor that is not for the faint of heart or the overly sophisticated, which in itself is pretty sophisticated. I'm just going to add that. <laughs> if, you're not, if you're not laughing various body parts off from the antics of the characters, you'll most certainly be caught up in the infectious laughter as Dom and Josh hear each other's stories. Do yourself a favor and check this out with some headphones on if you're at work. That is a good tip. And a uh, tip for you, if you have milk shooting out of your nose and didn't drink milk you need to go to the doc yeah you're probably the android from alien samurai duckling i am concerned <laughs> and if you are the alien from alien i'm even more concerned because <laughs> that means you would do anything yeah and in, including putting my life at risk to get your mission done and that's fucked. yeah you don't have human emotions so so how can i trust you i don't even know Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thanks everyone for listening to another episode. Once again, we'll be at Magfest on Friday at the Continue Panel at 11 p.m. So you can come and see us there, and uh, we'll be walking around the whole time. Yeah, we'll be there. So wear your fantasy fiction shirt, say hello, do whatever you want. Don't listen to me. <laughs> and uh, until next week, well, not next week. Yes, a two- week from next week. Until then. Thank you for listening, and keep on wizarding. You keep on wizarding over there, girl, and you know that I'm going to look yeah. at this painting and try to act like I'm not looking at you. <laughs> if you put some sunglasses on at the beach, you can look at all the titties you want. <laughs> Dude, that's why they invented sunglasses. <laughs> I don't fucking care if my eyes get sun cancer. I'm going to look at your booty. (laughs) Your cancerous booty. (laughs) 
<laughs> Keep on wizarding, everyone. Have a good week. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you real soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.